First time I got in touch with the practice, I was introduced into looking at my ancestors and realizing that my suffering and my gifts were so much deeper than I had ever understood before. So after a few years of practicing touching the earth and singing and learning the Dharma and the practice with so many different people. I'm understanding a little bit more what it means to heal. And I still don't know much, but what I see is there's a really good chance with the practice to heal this ancestral heart. I actually think of myself as the dream of my ancestors. And um, so to give back um, to my ancestors everything that they've given to me, I think it's only fair uh, that I um, practice um, being in the present moment, practice healing, um, practice coming back um, as just a way of saying thank you. Um, and um, because I wouldn't be here if um, it wasn't for my ancestors. Uh, especially in this great time of need of realizing that we cannot walk further apart from each other uh, because the planet is getting more populated and resources are becoming less abundant that um, the realization whether you're um, black or um, Jewish or Hispanic or Asian um, if uh, there has been slavery or colonization in, um, in your heritage or um, whether you're from the northern or, or western nations um, that the first step is um, acknowledging this and we may not know how to go about it or it, it may be a little bit hard but that's the first step that um, we have all received from our ancestors, no matter what our background is, seeds of suffering. And once we acknowledge that, then we can move forward together and recognize the suffering in others and their ancestors. I imagine healing ancestral trauma. And specifically for me, that means um, Passing trauma through, like, not necessarily just genetically, but through habit energy. Um, and not saying perhaps I love you or having a healing touch or being able to, to learn tools to you manage emotions and passing that on. Um, and so I've decided for my generation I'm going to be the one to change that pattern and hopefully heal, heal the past and um, I suppose effectively healing the future as well. And I think what my parents and I had in common was we looked across the table at each other and we said, you're not what I wanted. <laughs> so there was a lot of separation and, and distance within the family. I had a huge history of sort of drowning the pain um, of feeling not connected to with drugs and alcohol. <clears throat> and it took me a long time to, a long time in one incarceration <laughs> to want something different. And uh, so when I got sober, uh, all of these stories that I had about my parents and about our family, um, I had the opportunity to look at them and see if they were even true. And, uh, and they weren't true. You know, I, I began looking at my mother as a woman before she ever had me, as, uh, as a child.
so let's say that in, in the ancestral heart or back in time, something happened to somebody, um, uh, and then there was never any solace or any, any compassion toward them for that, we can show compassion now, and that compassion still reaches back to them there. When I'm here in the practice center with other practitioners from all different places all over the world, all different ages, children, elders, teachers, lawyers, wanderers, poets, musicians, and monks and nuns. Like, I think all of our ancestors are so related. And I wonder how, how did they know each other before? And how do we know each other now? I think the world needs a lot of healing and I think the world needs to um, sort of remember um, about the roots of humanity and what it meant to be human back in time where everything was built on trust. I feel that um, especially in the current political environment that people just don't trust each other anymore. We hopefully take care of other sentient beings better um, as well as our common ancestors, like uh, trees and um, rocks and um, etc. And when I look at her as a child that's so alone and has to be so responsible, for at such a young age, my heart opened to her. And I took her feet because I used to hold her feet to the fire, so to speak, and I would tell anybody at the slightest drop of a hat, or even if I wasn't <laughs> invited to, I would tell them about, you know, what a rough, tough mom she was. And that story changed. You know, that story changed to uh, what a great woman she was and what a great job she did. You know, she gave me everything that she didn't have. and. Um, and now that I'm sober, I get to be, she gets the daughter that she's always deserved. The ways many of us have inherited um, pain from our, from our past and the way that humanity used to structure itself in competition and uh, sort of fighting for dominance over each other is uh, inheritance that we now have to, to work through and to transcend sort of that tribalism and the rivalry and the sense of the other being a threat and a danger. And I think that's more than just psychological work. I think it's more than just relational work. Um, it is those, but I also think it's embodied work in the, the DNA expression that we have inherited from our ancestors that I've inherited. Um, and I practice with this every time, even like I drive by a police officer and I notice a strong, irrational terror in my body. Each word is an invitation of the bell, right? Please, stay again in that space. Allow yourself to sink into that space. Come down your heart, your belly, to your body. And awakening together. Feeling the ancestral heart. That's what